is Dana from MadeEveryday.com. I'm gonna show you how to turn your plain old t-shirt into something unique and special. And all you need is paint and paint brushes and freezer paper and love. It's really fun to customize a t-shirt. You might have a fun quote that you wanna put on a shirt. In fact, that's kind of a cool trend right now that I love when I go to the store. Or maybe you have a school event, a family event, holidays, different reasons that you want to print your own unique thing on your shirt. And you don't have to have it professionally printed. I'm gonna show you a cool DIY version you can just do yourself. So here's what you need. A t-shirt or other fabric, fabric paint, a paintbrush, a craft knife, and freezer paper. First, let's talk about paint because there are a ton of different kinds out there. You wanna use something that is specifically meant for fabric and it will say that right on the bottle, fabric paint. I got all of these at my local Joanne Fabric and Craft Store and there are so many cool colors, different shades, there's even glitter and metallic and there's even glow in the dark, <laughs> really cool. You can get some in a spray bottle and there's one that's called Slick. Like I said, there's lots of different types. Make sure it's fabric paint. And the reason that's important is that it will wash up better without cracking. And it just is a little more flexible with your fabric. So first, try the paints out on a piece of scrap fabric like I have done right here. I wanted to try out the different whites to see which one I liked best. And the one that I found first is this one in the middle. It's the soft matte finish. I love this and I use it the most on t-shirts, bags, different things like that. Next to it, I tried this slick kind right here. And that one is cool. It's got a little more translucent look to it. And then on this last one, I kind of mixed them together with a little bit of water and that gave it a real vintage kind of washed out look. So those are my whites. I also tried out some of the glitter and I just did little squares of paint so I could try it out real quick. This one was another slick one, which on the dark fabric wasn't quite the vibe I was going for, but it was great to try it out so that I knew that before I used my t-shirt. Here is more of the glitter, which I did on two different paints, black underneath. So try it all out, see what you like, and now let's talk about freezer paper. Now in order to get this really professional finish with our paint, nice clean lines around the edges, we are going to create a stencil for our shirt. And the key to this whole project is using freezer paper, which you can find at your local grocery store. And what's cool about it is that it has this shiny side. And that, when you press it on your fabric, creates kind of a temporary adhesive. You can paint, kill it off when you're done, and you have this kind of like awesome glory moment. So we are gonna start first with a really kind of basic thing. We're gonna make this little glitter heart, and then we'll move to the more advanced stage. Okay, I have a small piece of freezer paper here, and I have a heart that I'm going to use to cut out my stencil. I'm gonna lay this right on my cutting mat here. It's important to use a cutting mat so you're not actually cutting your table. And then I'm just gonna use a couple pieces of tape to hold it in place as I'm cutting. And you don't wanna use very big pieces because you have to tear this off later and you don't want it to tear your stencil. So just slightly holding it in place. Then I'm gonna take my heart and I am tracing it with just a pencil. But you know, as you get into more intricate designs, it's kinda of cool to just print the freezer paper from your printer on your computer. And I will show you that in our next step. Okay, trace this around. And then you're not going to cut it with scissors, you actually wanna use a craft knife so that you get a more clean, polished finish. So I have one right here. And when you start cutting, you have to be really careful that you're precise and that you don't tear it, things like that. So I'm gonna start on kind of the straightaway here because I feel like that makes it easier as you're going around. And I'm using my left hand to kind of hold things in place as I go. Then I turn the mat and you wanna be careful that See, as I'm tugging this, I don't tug the heart back. So I'm holding that, pressing as I go. And you know, if you tear this, it's, it's okay if it's a little hard, but you can start over. When it's an intricate design, I mean, that's kind of a, it's kind of a heartbreaker. <laughs> heartbreaker. Okay, it helps to turn your mat like I'm doing, especially when you're on those curvy spots. Okay. Going back, I'm really holding my hand right here so that this little point doesn't pull away from me. Keep going. And you can see here that I'm a little off of my line. That's okay. You, if you're getting kind of off of your line, don't try to go back and fix it. Just keep going with the line that you're on so that your stencil stays in one straight line. I learned a similar thing from an artist at once at a drawing show, he was talking about how don't use your eraser, just fix it by, you know, going with the flow. I guess it's kind of that make it work moment, I like that. Okay, 
There we go, I made it back to the beginning and you can see I can pull out my paper here. And see sometimes it gets a little stuck on the ends there, just use your craft knife to carefully pull that off. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna remove this from our mat here. Carefully pull the tape off. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna press this onto our fabric. I have my piece of fabric here and I'm using canvas fabric because I think this would look really cool stenciled onto a tote bag or something like that. Now I have the stencil and I should point out, we traced our heart onto the non-shiny side of the paper. The shiny side is what's gonna go down onto our fabric. So pay attention to that. And now take your iron, I have it on hot and we're just gonna press this right into place. And it's important you wanna get right around the edges of your stencil. Just like that, especially these little points, just leave it on for a little bit and make sure that it's really kind of glued into place. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, we've got it all pressed in place. Now comes the really fun part with the paint. Okay, I've got all my supplies, my paints, paint brushes, we're ready to go. First, you wanna have something underneath your stencil here so that the paint doesn't bleed through onto your table. I'm gonna use black and I'm pouring this onto a plate. You could use a bowl, whatever. We'll do a black layer first and then a gold glitter. Seriously, this paint is really cool again. Okay. Then just take your paintbrush. I got these at my local Joanne store as well. And you know, they have t-shirts there. They have all sorts of different things that you could use, which is awesome. Get it all in one spot. Okay, just paint right on. It's super fun. This is a great project to do with kids. And especially if your kids need like some unique thing. I swear my kids are always coming home. Mom, it's this special thing at school or you know, some costume. There are so many cool ways to use this technique. Okay, now you wanna make sure that you especially get this around to the edges. So sometimes I kinda of take this and just go, cause it might look like you got it and you didn't quite get it to the edge. And because that freezer paper has kind of sealed the edges, it's not going to seep underneath. Every once in a while that might happen. I'm not saying it's foolproof, but it works pretty good. Okay, and then also depending on the fabric, it might show your brush stroke. So kind of just be aware of that. Try to be nice and even, things like that. I think this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna do one layer. If you didn't think that was black enough, you could wait for it to dry and do another black layer. So you wanna let that dry for, I don't know, until it's dry, or you can use a blow dryer. That's my favorite method. Blow dry for about one minute, dry, which I have uh, done here. Okay, here's one that is finished. Now we're gonna use our glitter paint, different paintbrush. Just go right over the top. And this glitter one is fun because you can make it as sort of glittery or as glittery glittery as you want. So just kind of keep applying it and moving it around. It's like, it's, you'll see as you use it, it's just got glitter floating kind of in the paint. So I like to just keep adding as much as I can because I love glitter. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, I also wanted you to notice that you have to be careful not to go off of your freezer paper onto your fabric. That's happened to me before, it might happen to you, but just do your best. Blow dryer, dry it, set that aside, and then, oh, are you ready for the big moment? This is re really, this is the fun part, to peel this off. Okay, ready? Find the edge, and I don't know why I'm singing that song. It just feels like a really victorious moment. <laughs> Keep peeling it off, and just like that, you have this really cute, great little heart. Really fun. Okay, now that you've mastered a basic shape, let's amp it up a little bit and we'll do a t-shirt. This is the stencil that we're going to be using, and you can get it for free on my website, go to madeeveryday.com, and this just printed on normal printer paper, which you do wanna have, because it's nice to see your design and know where all the pieces go once you've cut them apart. But you also wanna print it onto freezer paper, which I have done here matte side, shiny side. And the best way to do that is to take a large piece of freezer paper out, cut it into these eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. And then you kind of want to, you know, take it on the edge of your table here so that it's not curling up so that it can feed through your printer and print. Make sure you know which side your printer prints on. Okay, set this all aside. Here's our stencil. We're gonna tape it in place like we did with our little heart. As you can tell, I kind of love hearts. Kind of have a thing for it, as I'm sure you do too. Okay, now I got my craft knife here, 
And this design, as you can see, is a little more intricate. There's more pieces involved here. So you will need to pay attention to kind of the negative spaces. As you're cutting out these letters, for instance, on this letter A, this inside of the A, I need to hold on to that because I'm gonna have to press that back into my stencil at the end, which is also why I have this other version so I can see that. So I'm gonna start with the little pieces first. Cut that out and I like to keep a bowl or something on my table to put these in because I know what you're thinking. Oh, I'll just make a pile. I'm totally gonna keep track of them. And then they're gone. And then you're super bummed. So cut that out. Then I'm gonna go to the O and cut out the middle of the O. And like I said, if you're not exactly on your lines, that's okay. Just try to be as precise as you can, but don't feel the need to go back and correct it because you're probably gonna make it worse. Okay, keep cutting this out. And then after you cut those out, and you know, you can do your letters both ways. You can have the little inserts put back in or, and I'll show you this once we get it pressed on, you could not use those and have that kind of cool where there's, you know, no middle to your O, whatever that font is called. Okay, then you would go back and you would cut out the letter A. And sometimes, since I have a lot of words here, I like to be a little more I don't know, to go a little faster, I'll cut maybe all of the lines that are going this direction first on my letters. See, I'm cutting all these L's together. And then turn my board, and now I'll cut all this direction. So just, you'll find out a method that works for you because sometimes this can take a little bit of time to do. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going on all my letters. When I get down to the heart, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut out the little circle for the tongue. I'm gonna cut out the mouth, cut out the eyes. Start with the smallest thing in the middle first and work your way up. So I'm gonna keep working on this and we'll chat in a second. Okay, I am almost done with my stencil here. I have all my letters cut out and I've cut out most of the face. I'm holding on to my letters in my bowl and hold on to these other things too. You know, the, the black kind of inverse stuff. I'm gonna show you a cool trick at the end that you can do with these leftover pieces. So let's do the last eyeball here. And just like I did in the heart, start on kind of a more straightaway. So I'm gonna start on this larger part of the curve here because it makes it easier to get to the trickier part when you have less of it cut out. That might not make sense, but once you start doing it, you'll get the hang of it. It's all about finding your own technique. You really have to hold on to both the part you're cutting and the paper that's staying as you go. And you know, get your whole body into it. Who needs to exercise when you can craft? Okay. Almost there. Okay, Whoa. pop that eyeball right out. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna cut out the heart and then we're gonna go to our iron and press it all in place. I have my t-shirt here on my ironing board. Take your stencil and good job, by the way. I know that was a lot of work and you wanna lay this right on top. And if your shirt is a little larger, it might help to do this on a table first and tape it just a little bit in place so that you can see exactly where it goes. Cause you want it to be centered. If it's off at all, once you paint, that's it. So you could measure it if you want. I am kind of a eyeball it, see how it looks. Okay, I think that's good. But you know what, if you press it in place and it's not right, you can actually peel it off and re reposition it. So don't stress too much. Okay, just tap it lightly first so that you don't bend any of those little pieces around the letters. Like this. Okay, there we go. We got the letters on. Now let's go back in and fill in our letters with those little pieces. Let's see what I got in here. That looks like letter D. So place that in. And it's kind of nice to hold one end. Press it and then you can let go, there we go. Make sure you give it a good press. Let's do our O. There we go. And like I said, you know, you could leave those out. I think the A and the other letters look kind of cool without it. So it's just the look that you're going for. And try to pay attention to which side is the shiny and which side is not. You will know very quickly if it's not, because I've done that before. Okay, our letters look really good. Let me just press this one more time. Make sure it's sealed really well. 
Now let's do our heart. And as you can see, it might be hard to figure out exactly where the eyeballs and the mouth goes. So this is why I have my extra printout here so that I can keep it right side by side and make it look perfect. Let's start actually with the mouth. Okay, our stencil is ready for paint. <gasps> Let's go do it. Now before you start painting, you wanna place something between the layers of your t-shirt so that no paint seeps through it. I'm just using a piece of cardboard here. You can buy some of those t-shirt form looking things. Those work great too. You can even use a couple layers of cardstock. The paint doesn't go through very much, so just something. Okay, there we go. For the letters, I'm using white and I'm using this soft matte kind that I talked about earlier. So squeeze a little of that out. And then for the heart, I'm going to use this fun pinkish purple raspberry orchidy. That's a technical shade color. Like that. Ooh, I should have got a little napkin. Make sure you don't get this on your t-shirt. Okay, let's start with the letters first. We start going just like we did with our little heart. And as you can tell on a darker color, the white is kind of not seeping into the fabric, but the fabric is absorbing the paint. And so you might wanna do two layers of white. It, again, totally depends on the look that you're going for. One layer of paint might give it a more vintage vibe, so. Okay, I'm gonna keep painting this and then we'll dry it. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and do a second layer of paint. Okay, everything is dry. Now comes the super fun and exciting part, the peel off reveal. Start pulling it up. Honestly, I love really like Good payoff moments, and this is one of those. Now, if it tears as you're pulling it off, that's okay. You can pick those little pieces of paper off. There we go. Okay, there's our main piece of paper gone. Now we're gonna pull out all these little pieces, like there's that S got a little stuck there. Okay, now go back to this letter A that we did. And you can use your fingernail or you can kind of pick it off with this little knife, whatever works best for you. There we go. Got that up. Now do the other letters. Just be careful not to poke into your shirt. If you're nervous with using a knife, just take your fingernail and you can grab it that way too. Okay, there's our letters, awesome. Now let's take off our little face. There we go, the cute little tongue. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's really cute. Okay, one more thing we're gonna press first, then we're gonna try it on. Let me grab my iron. One final step for our shirt is that we wanna heat set the paint. So I'm taking a really thin dish towel here or a piece of fabric, place it over the top, and then just use hot setting and press this around a little bit. And the reason you wanna do this is that it kind of seals the paint in place. If you didn't, it would wash out some of the paint the first time you washed it in your washing machine. That was a lot of washing, <laughs> which could be cool. Maybe you like that look, gives it kind of that vintage -y vibe, but I want mine to stay just as it is. So press it around a little bit. And there we go. Ooh. I'm gonna go try it on and we'll see how it looks. And what do you think? All you need is a few craft supplies. Okay, let me show you one last thing. Remember those discards that we had from our stencil? I told you to hold on to those. Here's a cool thing that you can do. You can kind of create the inverse of it. I'm gonna trace around my heart and make kind of like a border heart. And this is really fun to do with all the letters too. Sometimes if you want to make like, cut out a giant box and then press the letters inside the box. Okay, so just keep going all the way around so that you create a little border. Hold on to your little tongue piece like we did. And then 
Check that out. You can have a whole heart family. Look at that. And you might need it in this color. Twins, triplets. Ah. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now you guys have all the skills you need to create your own stencils on your t-shirts, bags, whatever. Have fun with it. And for more ideas and tutorials, you can check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for all of your craft sewing and other cool fabric needs, head to your local Joanne Fabric and Craft Store or head to joanne.com. I made a few more t-shirts for my husband, Casey. So let's go see what he thinks of them.